of our deliverance. And God said it. Today with expectations that whatever you said you can do, you can do. And right now, God, I'm declaring if you said it, I believe it. I'm looking for my blessing. So we thank you today, God. Touch my mind, touch my heart, touch the heart of all those who are listening, those who are joining us virtually. That you may get your glory. We thank you for your presence now. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody stand and grab John 15. Every device says grab your Bibles. If you still use a Bible or whatever device you use, go to the Gospel of John chapter 15. I want to, I want to warn you guys always that whenever we see babies, we hear babies cry. You know what we do? We thank God babies cry. Yeah. Understand, young people are going out to their classes now. We do have our, our young people classes. Whenever you see a baby crying, thank God. Oh, you know, I, I had a, a mother, as you're going to John 15, the young people are leaving. I had a mother one time leave the church because somebody snared, sneered at her because her child was crying. You better cut that out. Everybody's welcome here. Yes. Now, you start crying. <laughs> That's when we call the 911. <laughs> John's Gospel, chapter 15. I'm going to read it to you. I, I want to tell you right now before I even start preaching today's sermon is a game changer. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. So I want you to hear this. Um, John 15, I'm going to read it verse 1. I'm going to read it to you hearing this. I got to read 16 verses just so you have a context. Verse 1 out of the NIV I am the true vine. My father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. Showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. My command is that you love each other as I love you. Greater love is this to no man than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants. Because a servant does not know what his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit that lasts. And anything you ask in my Father's name, he will give you. May God have blessed you reading the word. You may be seated. For as long as the Spirit of the Lord is allowed today, we're going to speak from this thought. I need some prayer warriors, but I need you to help me out. Turn to a neighbor on either side of you and say, look at me, look at me. I'm here to talk to you. That way they won't be rude. And I want you to say this, just like they owe you five out. Say it out. You ready? Say neighbor. Neighbor. Or neighbor. Pastor's going to preach about. Pastor's going to preach about. Fruit is the root. Fruit is the root. One more. What you doing? is the root. Yeah. Fruit is the root. Thank you, ushers. Security. Dr. Henry Cloud 
in his book, Necessary Endings, takes time to vividly explain that all things must end. Nothing goes on forever. Everything goes to an ending. Um, one thing ends, and another thing starts, but nothing goes on forever. It was King Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastes who agreed and picked up this thought on a theological level. This, this scripture is so familiar. I know that you know this text already before I even read it. But I want you to listen to it in its context, because sometimes we just read too fast. Listen to what Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. He said, um, there is, to everything, there is a season. Yeah. Come on, y'all, that's preaching right there. Yeah. I don't know what season you're in, but I just want you to know Solomon is saying, you're going to have some seeds of plenty, some seasons of plenty, you're going to have some seasons of sickness, you're going to have all kinds of seasons. I don't know what season you're in, but just know it's just a season. Then the verse continues on and says, and a time to every purpose. That's why it's so important that you do what God tells you to do when God tells you to do it. Because his purpose has times. I wish somebody was listening to me. There are times to his purposes. But then it says, watch the second page. Watch, watch the balance of life. Watch what God says. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to build up, and a time to tear down. A time to weep, a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. He could have gone on in many categories because things start and things stop. But that's not our problem today. Our problem is not the fact that things start and end. The problem is how they end. See, if you just let life's endings come in your life and life just give you what it wants when you have the power of God to control how some situations end, then sometimes those endings leave us in a very uh, drastic state of depression, broken, bruised, sitting around without the ability to believe there is still hope for your situation. This comes when you let life end everything. Relationships breaking up. You shower it broken. And this That you should have been had out of your life. There's some things you should have been gotten out of your life. There's some habits and some behaviors and some things that you're doing that is killing you. Dr. Cloud calls these things necessary endings. He said they're necessary because they're stopping you from everything you're praying for. God is telling you, look, everything you want before... He's the person that comes in and cuts stuff off 
Make sure stuff ain't dead. Make sure the tree is living. He said there's three types of necessary endings that you need to know are in your life. The first thing, you got to get rid of folk that look good but do nothing. Cut them out your life. They cute, fine, all that. Cut them out your life. They ain't doing nothing for you. Matter of fact, loving them is killing you. Then the next thing he said, find those people who are sick. You've been putting resources in. Year after year, resources, resources, resources. Like a woman who stays with a man who beats her. Keep trying to change him. And he starts wailing more and more and more. Or, so you gotta get rid of them because they ain't gonna never change. And then he said, cut off the dead stuff. Stuff that are wrong. It takes us to our text. Look at the first verse of our text. Jesus is using the same symbolism, but he's using it as a bond. He tells us spiritually, here's the danger. He's saying that there's some things you gotta get rid of, or you can have the stuff I got for you. It's right here in the text. The first verse says, I am the true bond. Look at John 15, chapter 1. I am, verse 1, I am the true bond. My father is a husband. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, I cut it off. But the branch that bears fruit, I purge it, and so it can bear more fruit. Amen. Jesus Christ is saying that unless some things change in your life, I gotta purge you. Stay with me, y'all. Some of you may not be getting your prayers answers no, no longer because you've been purged and God is trying to get you back on track. I know you don't like that, but what God is saying to you, Jesus is saying, but if you are doing some stuff, I'm getting ready to purge you so you can get more blessings. Uh, somebody holler more blessings at And then the third thing is you look through, he was saying, Jesus is saying here, but um, I'll get rid of you, but uh, I'm still going to love you. Verse, verse 16 is where we land ourselves to take off into our exposition of the text. Look at verse 16. It says, you didn't choose me. I chose you. That right there, y'all don't, you don't oh, know where you at. God said, I chose you. I, I love that song by the wine. It's millions didn't make it. But I'm one of the ones who did. God said, I chose you. You didn't choose me. He said, I chose you that you be, I ordained you that you would bring forth fruit and your fruit will remain. Verse 16. He said, and when you do it, you can ask him anything in my Father's name and I will give it to you. Here's what God's saying. Fruitfulness, fruitfulness in your life is what decides whether or not God can bless you. Fruitfulness is the root. Anything you want to get in life, he said, you can ask anything of my father if you are fruitful, because I pay you to be fruitful. is how fruitful are you. Some people's relationship with God is, you know him just well enough to say you saved and to ask him for stuff. Yeah, come on. But you don't have an intimate relationship with him. Somebody else got to do your praising for you when you come to church. You got to watch other folk get happy about God. I beg to differ with you, man or sir. Don't you know God's done just as much for you I'm just teaching it because God told me. 
when you teach somebody. You come to church every Sunday asking God for stuff and act like it's God's fault. Yeah. 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 Listen, no. All I need you to do is be a little fruitful. Read when you're not in church. Uh, read my word and pray when you're at home and look around and tell somebody else how you got what you got. Be fruitful in your life. When you're fruitful, I can drop in. So God said, if I don't promise you all that stuff, here's the second part of my text. All right, then, what you doing? What you doing? If you're just, if you're not serving God truly, and it shows if you're not getting blessed, what you doing? Are you like haphazardly serving God when you want to? Are you asking God for stuff but not willing to spend time with Him? What you doing to get what you need if you're not going to get it? by getting closer to God as the scripture says. What you doing? If you want a new direction, then you gotta change what you're doing and understand what fruitfulness is. Uh, Proverbs 11 and 30. Somebody write that down. Proverbs 11, 30 says, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And blessed are those who win souls. How to find the NIV. What God is saying is, your life in Him should be so exciting, so joyful, that the unbeliever walked in here, they would look at you and just be drawn to you. Yeah. You should be on your job without a bumper sticker on your car. Somebody ought to know when you get out of the car, I'm saved. You, you ought to be, people ought to look at you and say, man, I know what you used to be. How in the world are you making it now? Can somebody say it had not been? Jesus all week. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. The baby said a month. <laughs> and the reality is, well, how come there's no fruit in this in life? Because God said, I ordain you to win fruit. So the first way you win fruit is you win souls. The second way you win fruit, and I love this because God tries to let us know. Colossians 1 and 10. You please God, you do good works, and you grow in his word. Colossians 1 and 10, look at it. Uh, 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 it tells us that God wants to bless us that you might walk worthy well, in pleasing the Lord, yeah. uh, bearing fruit, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. He said, you want to be fruitful? And he said, don't look at me. Don't look like I'm preaching. I can just tell you what the definition is. God just told you you got to win souls to be fruitful. Secondly, you got to be pleasing to God. Quit trying to please man and please God. Yeah. 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 That's That's it. It. Sitting in church, where is somebody looking at your hair? Somebody tell you, your hair don't look good today. You're going to spend the whole service looking at that instead of pleasing God. How many of the Bible said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his course of praise? So if you want to know how to please God, all you got to do is give him a prayer on account of. See, I'm old enough to know what layaway was. Some of y'all don't know about layaway. What is layaway for? You know what it means. You can take a dollar and get a hundred dollars worth of stuff. I love me some layaway. Real fruit 
to give you three things in this text to lift off to tell you how do I become a fruitful believer. Jesus says this in the text. Fruit is the root. I don't care whatever else it is that you need. Go back to being fruitful and nothing can stop it. But you don't know who I am. Yes, but God does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, God likes to choose folks that other folks say ain't nothing and make them something. I'm a witness to that. I know, I know some of y'all think y'all something already, but God is the one who made me something that I never thought I would be. Write these three things down. I, I'm going to give you all three. I, I usually don't do that, but I want to make sure I get through this. Um, the believers... Best life comes from being fruitful. Write it down, point one. The believer's best life comes from being fruitful. Now I'm gonna give you one, I'm gonna preach, then I'll go back to the other. The rest is, first, look at the text. I am the vine, my father is a husband. Verse one, every branch of me that bears fruit is a good person. Verse three, now you are clean through the word I have spoken, abide in me, verse four. Understand this passage contextually. This is called the Upper Room Discourse. If you were to go back through your Bible, you would find out that this was a sermon that Jesus preached right after he went to the Last Supper with his disciples in the room. It started in chapter 13, after, and then it went on to chapter 17. This is Jesus' last speech and preaching. It's called the Upper Room. They were in the Upper Room, and he was praying to the disciples. Now, you got to know this is important because Judas had just walked out because Jesus said somebody was going to betray me. The disciples wondered what's going on. He had his soldiers looking for Jesus. Their world was falling apart. Jesus knew he was getting ready to go. He knew that the Garden of Gethsemane was coming. He knew the cross was coming. He knew his disciples didn't understand it. So what he did, in your picture, I want you to see it. After they got done eating, he got up from the table, stood over his disciples, and began to teach them from this discourse. He already told them in chapter 14. He said, look, um... Let not your heart be troubled, uh, neither let it be afraid. I like that. Because what God is saying is, Jesus always want to prepare us for what's coming. Yeah. So what he does is give us a word in ahead of time. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. How many know there's some situations you went through, and you don't know how you went through them so easy, but you got through them because God prepared a word in advance. Come on, come on, come on. You heard it in Bible study. You were reading it. Maybe somebody on the radio said, isn't it just like our Savior? You know, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. He was trying to encourage them. I like the fact that God tries to encourage our hearts. Even though as messed up as we are, he don't leave us like that. Do you know the beauty of coming into a church service and everybody around you, um, you know, you may think you're inferior because you sinned last week. Uh, <clears throat> I hate to tell you, probably everybody sitting next to you sinned. <laughs> If God strike you, you got to strike about 15, 20 more. Because that's what God is. But look at this. He said, the upper room is you got you to build this process. Because when you take those words that you, God gives you, they'll come back. When our daughter Jennifer went through bronchitis so bad that the doctor didn't think she were going to survive, and we had already prayed. As soon as the doctor said that, me and Marcia joined hands because we had already prayed. So the word that came back from our prayer from a few days ago blessed us at that moment with Jennifer. You can't wait till something happened and go trying to search for some words. That's why you upset. Coming through you, Bible, ain't nothing coming. You all anxious now, in an anxiety attack, wondering why the word ain't coming you down. So you should have got that word earlier. So you could have been blessed. Then he comes back to chapter 15, our chapter. Here's what he did. He starts out by saying, I'm the vine. I'm the true vine. He didn't say I'm the vine. He said, I'm the true vine. 
He didn't say I'm a grapevine. He didn't say I'm just a vine. What he did was he was using a symbolism that all Jews knew about. He's talking about a grapevine. And a grapevine, the way that it falls down after it's traipsed around whatever thing they used to prop it up, is that all the branches come from the center branch, and that's how they get their nourishment. So he was trying to tell them, I am the true vine. Now what's funny about this is the word vine, or well, that symbolism about the vine, every Jew knew about it because if you go back to the Old Testament, it was always used as the Jews messing up. There would always be the vine that got, you know, straight away. They're, they're called the vine that didn't make it. Jesus comes along right in the middle of what the devil is doing and saying, but I'm the true vine. That word true is the Greek word aletheia. He's saying, I'm a vine that's truth and got power. Okay, I'm explaining this. Some of y'all don't understand. Other things may be true, but they ain't got no power. It may be true that you feel good after you take a drink, but that drink can't bless your life. It may be true that you're good after you smoke, but that smoke can't help you. All I'm saying, God said, I'm the truth, and I'm the truth that saves. Other stuff may walk out on you, but I'm going to be there with you. God said, I'm the only one that's faithful. I know I got a witness in here that can tell somebody, I tried a lot of things, but once I got a hold of Jesus, there is nobody who has treated me like Jesus has treated me. He was dead, because he's the true one. But when I sent the next letter, if you love me, yes or no, check, she checked, no. <laughs> she wasn't love her. <laughs> God is faithful. He's saying the reason you stay with me is because even when you're not faithful, I'm there. Exactly. You've done a whole lot of stuff. I know about it as your God, and I still treat you with respect. Yeah. You don't mess up many times. I just washed it all away. Yeah. 
uh, he is, the father is a, uh, uh, the gardener. He is the one, watch this y'all, he prunes us, so he's the one that tells how many trials we're going to have and how many we aren't going to have. Next time you're in a trial, just, just know that God is pruning you so you can be blessed. He said, because every man to me don't bear fruit. He said, I got I to gotta get rid of it. What that means, I told you, that he's not, you say so he's going to get rid of it. What it means is you're not going to get your blessings because you're not being fruitful. He said, but all y'all who are in me, I got to purge you. There's times I got to hurt you. There's times I got to take you through some stuff or you would not get blessed. I got to take away some stuff that's dead in your life that's killing you from getting the life that I have for you. Some of y'all get mad when God let troubles come in life. But you know when you got access, you ever had access, or you had to go get a root canal, and you know, and you called on Thursday, and the doctor said your appointment ain't till Monday. Monday morning, you know what you're doing? You sitting in the driveway at dentist's office. And you know when you get to that driveway that the dentist got to hurt you to help you. Because you know when you get that drill, you start pulling them roots out, it's going to hurt for a while. He'll, Quit. And Einstein, he said, I told you I know you. You ain't got to buy no other ticket. What are you doing? 
He said, son, he said, I, I know, he said, son, I know y'all know who I am. And I know who I am. I'm looking for a ticket because I don't know where I'm going. Better <laughs> <laughs> yeah. feel me. Without God, you don't know where you're going. Yeah. You just as directionless without God in your life. Yeah. You're going to be doing some stuff that don't, you're always looking back in hindsight. Because God is saying, I'm the only one that sets directions for your life. What am I talking about? God said, without me. Think about it. What about if you couldn't pray? What about if you couldn't see God's peace? What about if you didn't have God's promises? What about if you didn't know God could turn stuff around? What about if you didn't know there is possibly a miracle that can happen in my life? What about if you were living and did not know that God could pay your bills? What about if you were living and you were going crazy and didn't know God said, I didn't give you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind? Don't you know without God you can't do anything? Yes. 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 you got to it's not like me. A broken life in a believer is right there. Verses 7 down to 13 tells us. Here's the stuff you lose. You lose the ability to pray. He said, you can't even call on me when you walk away from me. Your life get broke. I don't know if you guys know this. Y'all know this song. What's that called? This person, right? Can I tell you something? Donnie Hathaway never got a chance that was his only number one song. And he never got a chance to hear it, other than when he made it. I need you to fact check this. Watch this, guys. Donnie Hathaway started out in church. He started out with God on fire. And so while he was in the secular world making all that money, he never got comfortable. And he had this thing, this conflict growing. You know how it is. I, I know you don't know how it is, but I know you do know how it is. When you're in the church, but you're also out in the world. I mean, I said, I know you don't know how it is, but you know how it is. Yeah. When you're in the church, but some of the stuff you still like is, come on, everybody with me? Yeah. Well, Donnie Hathaway was wrestling. He went to the Essex Hotel in New York, went up on the 15th floor. I know you knew this. Right before his hit song came out, he opened the window and jumped out to his death. You said, but he had all those hits with Bird Flax. He had all that money. He had all that stuff. Yeah, but he didn't know where he was going. He had no direction. Don't you ever think money gonna keep you? Don't you think some man and some woman gonna keep you? Don't you think if you had everything you wanted, you wouldn't need God? How many know if I had everything I wanted, I'd be sitting at all here. Give, take the world, but give me Jesus. Without me, you can do nothing. Amen. Get rid of everything else that's stopping you. He said, my joy is going to be, you're going to miss the joy. I got to close. You're going to miss the joy. He said, the fourth thing you're going to miss is, you're going to miss me being your friend. Amen. You know there's believers out there, you never have got the fact that God wants to be your friend, not just your Savior. Amen. I didn't say that. He did. There's some of us, we can pal around with Jesus. Not disrespectfully, but we, we know God good enough that we know we can call on him. I'm riding down the road. I turn the wrong station on. I start that. I say, God, I can't find that station. I said, Jesus, come on, help me find that station. I might be riding a little further down. I said, Jesus, you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> and I'm not telling you, I'm talking to Jesus like that. Because I know it. I'm not disrespectful. I ain't riding around to my JC. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> but I'm talking about being close enough to him to know that if nobody else is around, he's with me. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. How many know going down the road people are with you? How many know that sometime later, I'm very close, he's with you? How many know that the Lord is with you? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Last point. First point was uh, the believer's best life is in uh, bearing fruit, being fruitful. The believer's broken life is broken. The text even said that, you know, once you get dragged away, uh, the world puts you on some hot water. It says fire, actually, in the text. And then you're cast on the heat and burn. You're walking around now wondering why no joy in your life because you pushed away from the vine. Yeah. Then he goes to the last point. The last point says the believer's blessed life is right after he is fruitful. Right after you're fruitful. You know why? Because once you make the step to be fruitful, you don't even care what the enemy's doing. How many know right after you went through some stuff? I'm, I'm closing. 
After you went through some stuff, and you got through it, and now you're stronger. You know, you got a little strut on you. You know what I'm talking about? You walk around your house tonight like, I wish the devil would. And you know what I mean? You can't get me with that no more. So Finances get better and you don't know how. Oh. 
Is there somebody in here who you're tired of being a vagabond? I don't know what you're looking for, but I invite you to be a member of this church. Shiloh is what you see. You heard the vision. You know where we're going. And you say, God, when I get to heaven, I want to be able to say, I use my gifts. You want to come and remember, lift your hand right now. If you're not a member. And we're going to talk to you today about being a part of our family. Yes, Lord. Amen. My last call is anybody who heard this message and something took it in their heart, the Holy Spirit, and you need prayer like these two ladies. Come on quickly. I don't know what your issue is, but come on. I'm going to pray today. Amen. And this brother right here raised his hand. I need brother Pastor Matt. I need some brothers to come stand with your brother here. Glad to God bless you, my brother. I'm going to come down and talk with him. But I'm waiting on other folks. Come on, come on. Would you wait for somebody else to move? You know what the need is in your life. You need to move. What's your name, man? Aaron Dean. Aaron Dean said, I'm so glad I came here. 